I'm here with Mary Hetmansberger today, and Mary is the author of Mixed Metal Jewelry Workshop. Hi, Mary. Hi, how are you? And you excel at mixing all these different looks together, and I love what you've done with the closures in the front. So since we're talking about clasps today, yes. you have some examples here to show us with different necklaces that can be closed in the front. Yeah, I, I kind of like the idea of finding alternative ways to make clasps mm -hmm. and closures, but also mm -hmm. they end up being a great focal point for the piece. They really do. So this one, it looks like you're using a button. I am. I'm mm -hmm. using this this button here, mm -hmm. and it's it's just like a button. So mm -hmm. it's a nice little ridge in the back. Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to do is to make it. Um, it was hard because you know you don't have a hole, so you got to figure out a right. different way to connect it. So mm -hmm. what I do is I actually take wire and I make mm -hmm. a paddle that I'm going to stick through and make that sort of the the uh, focal bead. Okay. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay. And what type of wire are you using before you start to hammer? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using either a twenty or an 18 gauge. Okay, so a fairly heavy wire. A fairly heavy wire. Mm -hmm. You can even go heavier, but um, you have to make sure it gets through the, the, through the little hole there. Through the there. shank, okay. Right. So what I do when I'm making um, these little paddles in here mm -hmm. is I come straight down first. Mm -hmm. And then oh, what I'm going yeah. to do is actually pull it. Oh, you're going to, okay. And what that does is it sort of spreads it out. So you hammer first and then Okay. And you can see how you get a really nice, um, really a really nice shape, yeah, really nice really, paddle. Yeah, it happened fast too. And what we're going to do then is stick this through, and you want to make sure that it's big enough that it's not going to pull through. Okay. Now the only trick here is now you have to deal with the button. So mm -hmm. you come in and cut, and then you have to make sure you don't get too close to your button and, and uh, hammer it. So I always put okay. it on the edge, mm -hmm. and then I do the same way. Come in and hammer it down first. Mm -hmm. Whoops. And then pull. You know, you can really tell from the sound, too, that the actions you're doing are different. When you hit it straight down, it sounds a little bit different than when you hit it right. when you're pulling. And you don't want a lot of movement, but a little mm -hmm. bit is fine. Yeah. And you can even go back in um, right on the edge and pull again mm -hmm. and kind of make sure that both sides are kind of evenly spaced. Mm -hmm. And then what happens, I'll show you the back side of this so you can see the mechanics. Okay. So basically, what you're going to do then is you're going to create another wire piece mm -hmm. out of your 20 or 18 gauge mm -hmm. that sort of mimics these components. Yeah, so, so these, this is a pre-made component pre -made and then you're component, mimicking right. the design with your wire. Right. And so what's kind of fun about this is you can make it whatever shape you can get as wide as you want. Mm -hmm. And what I really like about this piece is mm -hmm. that um, this then becomes your clasp. Let me see where it is. Oh, so you're just going to slide it right off of there. Right. And then you would wear it of course, this in the front. Right. Mm -hmm. So you uh, you take a real heavy gauge piece of wire, anything mm -hmm. from like a, oh, maybe a 14 gauge, even up to an 8. Oh, I okay. mean, you can get really mm -hmm. thick. And you're going to do this the same way. You're going to hammer this whole piece of wire. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, what I do with these is these big pieces, I just hold them actually in a teardrop shape. Mm -hmm. And then I come in like this mm -hmm. and start in hammering. Mm -hmm. And the way that I get all of this sort of... Um, I don't know, I, I guess variation in size and see that real forged look mm -hmm. is I actually will ch kind of change and sometimes use the ball ping pong. All right. And then when you get down to the end, then you either drill or poke a hole in the in mm -hmm. the end with the uh, hole punch pliers and then connect it up with your jump rings. Mm -hmm. But it's a fun it's a fun way to make a focal point and then hook it on like that. Yeah, and it makes a really good closure too. It does, it does. Mm -hmm. Nice and secure. And another way to use the buttons too, which is really kind of fun, is if you just take a piece of wire and do mm -hmm. a swirly, mm -hmm. and then basically put your jump rings, get back here. So you made a little jump ring chain on the back of right. the button. And then you come in and just slide it through. Oh, so you're not physically attaching the button, it's getting um, it's in between the wire spirals exactly, here. Exactly, exactly. Good so idea. that's how you actually make that closure. Mm -hmm. This will hook on to the end. You know, you could do mm -hmm. it even this way sure. on this piece. Yeah. And just make sure that it, you know, it's going to fit and mm -hmm. you're going to you're going to come together. And also, of to. course, you've hammered your wire, so that yes. is going to keep its shape. Because right. if you used a thin wire and didn't hammer it, then it might pull away. Exactly. And mm -hmm. you always want to make sure that you're you're hammering and making it work hard, mm -hmm. so it's right. going to really do a nice connection there. Cool. 
Yeah. All right, so what about this piece here? It looks like um, you created a wire squiggle and this is gonna become also a focal element. Exactly, and and on these, it's the same thing. When you're, when you're making these, and I have a tendency to um, make a little bit different. I'll show you how I make that actual. Okay. Um, little wrap loop, I actually okay. come in and I just bring my wire f towards me and mm -hmm. pull it to the back. I end up with more of a teardrop shape mm -hmm. and I actually like that. I mm -hmm. have a tendency to to work with um, not so many tools. I'm, I'm kind of a mm -hmm. <laughs> hands low, on. low tech. Hands on, low yeah. Tech, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then well, your work also has a more organic look to it, so that yeah. makes sense. So I come in and cut, cut that real close, make sure it's nice and tight so you don't have any sharp edges. Mm -hmm. And then when you do your shaping, don't don't overthink it. Mm -hmm. That's sort of one of those things that has, and especially even on these little guys. The I mean, squiggles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just come in and grab one way, grab another. So you're using bent nose pliers to do all this. I can, you can use any pliers. My, my I just don't like I bet the at round home nose. You don't even use your pliers. Yeah, I do, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the round nose okay. because I have I like to have a better grip. I you like want to a have little something. Bit of an edge there. Yeah, I like to have a uh, mm -hmm. straight inside. Mm -hmm. So I've made my side here, mm -hmm. here like this, and then when I go to do my wrap loop. Again, mm -hmm. I just come in, pull it down. So you're actually doing all of your wrapping and everything first and then hammering the I center do. part? I do, mm -hmm. and, and part of that is just, I think, out of habit. Mm -hmm. The other thing I, I tend to do that, the reason I do that also, is because then I can actually even hammer my, my little um, wrap loops too, mm -hmm. which I kind of like that look. And I like to have it kind of flat mm -hmm. and then come in And hammer. Mm -hmm. So that, that'll hold the shape, like you said. Right. And what's what's really fun about any of these shapes, or mm -hmm. any time you're using wire like this, mm -hmm. you can add beads. And I'll show you on this piece here. Mm -hmm. Like on this piece, this is a straight a straight um, piece of wire. But the bead, I actually um, intentionally left wire so that it can move. Yeah, and you're just using a thick wire when you do just that, a thick so wire. that it will maintain its shape. And you can see at the bottom here, the squiggles are coming out from the front of this. Um, sunburst component here. Right, and so. what's kind of, uh, I guess, um, interesting about this piece, mm -hmm. it looks like all of these are, are, you know, I have a lot of fringe, but mm -hmm. I use the, I utilize the fact that these had a, a hole here, uh -huh. so I put my extra, like, fringe or Decorative. dangles down oh, there. Oh, I see what you're saying. So this part is the part that this actually is, actually is actually your clasp. This is actually your clasp. And one thing I wanted to point out on this is that I actually, these squiggles are really helpful because it allows you to get in and then make it so that that's not going to come out. Mm -hmm. So I like to actually use the squiggles because mm -hmm. they actually become part of the piece to make the clasp really hold well. Right, plus it's just bringing that design motif the whole way through your piece. Exactly. And at the bottom there you did the paddling. I did the paddling, mm -hmm. again to hold the beads on. Mm -hmm. um, you can do things like uh, burn balls so that, you know, mm -hmm. burn balls on the end of the with wire. With the torch, you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I like the paddles and I, I kind of mm -hmm. stuck with that whole theme on everything. And if mm -hmm. you'll notice too, I use a lot of, like you said, the mixed metals. So I'm mm -hmm. using both the copper and the silver to mix them together. Well, that's such a great look. And on the other necklace you used an actual toggle ring at the front, is that right? I did, mm -hmm. I did, but I didn't use the, the toggle. I did mm -hmm. the same sort of idea of uh, just mm -hmm. taking the components and, and having it thread through. Mm -hmm. Another thing I wanted to point out is I like to use um, I like to use oval jump rings um, oh, uh -huh. a lot of times, especially if I'm using a thinner gauge, because mm -hmm. that way, and especially in bracelets and mm -hmm. stuff, if they pull, you're not going to have um, you know have it come apart as right. easily. It keeps its shape. And that's mm -hmm. another way of mixing the metals. If you have a you know a copper component and mm -hmm. then you put the silver on top, it really adds a lot. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mary. Thank you. And from in the background to center stage, clasps are definitely a jewelry element with many uses.